In these next few videos, I'm going to be talking about the concept of causality in econometrics. And specifically, I'm going to be talking about the Rubin causal model, which is named after a guy, Rubin, who initially came up with the idea. So the idea here is that we are interested in whether an event X causes an event Y to happen. And notice that I'm sort of rewriting the word causes here just to highlight the fact that this is different to the way in which we've been thinking about situations thus far. Essentially thus far we've kind of been content with saying is there an association between X and Y? In other words, as X increases, does Y tend to increase? We haven't actually been explicit and said, well, we're interested in whether X causes Y. But that is what is going to concern us now. And the example which I'm going to talk about here is the example of a Hearts and Minds campaign. So the idea in a Hearts and Minds campaign is that some sort of level of infrastructure uh, spending rather causes a decline in violence in a given conflict area. So the idea here is that in a given conflict zone, if you spend within a certain district or a certain state on things like basic infrastructure, then you increase the sort of outside options for individuals, which actually means that they're less likely to join an insurgency, for example. And you might naively think, well, let's just compare the average level of violence in those states which didn't receive infrastructure spending. So I'm going to say D here captures that, and D is equal to zero for those states which didn't receive infrastructure spending. And we're going to contrast that with those states which did receive infrastructure spending. So DI is equal to one. And we might find these results. We might find that at some sort of index, the average level of violence for those states which didn't receive infrastructure spending was 100, whereas those that did, it was 150. So this seems a bit confusing, right? Because what we actually were hoping is that it was the other way around. So why could this be? Well, the reason is that essentially the relationship which is dominating here is the sort of reverse causal relationship. In other words, those states which had high levels of violence were more likely to be selected for in order to um, sort of decrease the level of violence within those states. So more was spent in those states which were actually more violent. And, and it's actually that which is reflected in the average level of violence in the two states. It's not the fact that infrastructure spending causes violence to go up. It's definitely not that. It's the other way around. It's this what we call selection bias, which is dominating here. So using this example, we're going to talk about the conditions under which we can say, does infrastructure spending actually cause a decline in violence? And to talk about that, what we're going to need to do is we're going to need to define for each given state the level of potential violence. So I'm going to define exactly what I mean by that. What we're going to say is that the level of potential violence for any given state can take on one of two values. It can take on a value of V1i if that state did receive infrastructure spending. In other words, if DI was equal to 1. And it can take on a value of V0i if DI is equal to 0. So it's important to highlight now that essentially for each given state, we don't observe both of these outcomes. We only observe one of these outcomes. But if we could observe both of these outcomes, then for a given state, the difference between these two levels of um, potential violence would represent the causal effect of infrastructure spending. It's essentially like if we had two parallel universes and in one of those universes the state didn't receive infrastructure spending and we compared that with their level of violence um, in a state when they did receive infrastructure spending. So we're comparing the violence or the potential levels of violence in these two different universes. Obviously, we don't actually observe that, but if we could, then this would rep delta here would represent the causal effect of infrastructure spending on violence. And this is the sort of individual level effect. So in practice, what we are sort of interested in is what is the average causal effect? So that's the expectation of delta. And that's equal to the expectation of V1i minus the expectation of V0i, just because the expectations operator is a linear operator. But what do I actually mean about this potential level of violence? I better define exactly what I mean by that. Essentially, when 
someone, perhaps the US government, so perhaps a, a US governmental agency like USAID, or perhaps when the government of the region in question makes a decision as to whether to spend on that given state, then it allocates states using, or allocates infrastructure spending rather, in a non-random fashion. So it allocates some states to have infrastructure spending, which is this sort of top branch here, and it then allocates some other states with infrastructure, or to not have infrastructure spending rather, and this is the bottom branch here. And what we could do for both of these groups is we could say, well, what is the level of violence that that given district would have obtained had they received infrastructure spending and compare that with the level of violence which they would have obtained had they not received infrastructure spending. So within each of these groups, basically, we're comparing their two outcomes. In the top one, we actually observe V1i. So this v naught i here is what we call a counterfactual. We never actually observe it because we know that, seeing as we're in the top branch here, that di is equal to 1. But we can still talk about the fact that there is some difference between the level of violence that that state had, um, given that they did have infrastructure spending, and compare that with the potential level of violence that they might have obtained had they not received infrastructure spending. And we can do the same thing in the bottom group. So we can say, what's the difference between V1i and v naught i And the difference here is that V1i is the counterfactual, whereas v naught i is the observed. So when we talk about this term here, which I've already defined to be the average causal effect, what are we actually doing? Well, what we would actually be doing is we would be grouping these two groups together and we would just be basically evaluating what is the average difference between V1i and v naught i across both of these groups. That would represent the average causal effect. Often what we're also interested in is let's say, what is the difference between V1i and V0i within those that were actually treated? In other words, those states which did receive infrastructure spending. So here what we would be doing is we'd be saying, well, what is the difference between the expectation of V1i, given that di is equal to 1, and the expectation of V0i, given that di is equal to 1? Um, if you can make out what I'm writing there. Um, and essentially, this is evaluating what is the average causal effect on those that were treated. So we call that the average causal effect on the treated, and we, that abbreviates to ACT. Okay, in the next video, we're going to talk about how, seeing as we don't observe these counterfactuals, how can we still proceed and actually try and tease out what is the causal effect of infrastructure spending on levels of violence?